I would uh, request uh, uh, General Farhan Tayyab uh, to uh, moderate the next session and uh, I think uh, Farhan we are going to uh, soon after uh, calling the panelists and everyone we are going to move on to the live case first because they are ready at NICVD and uh, then uh, after that we will start the case presentation. So please go ahead. Okay, sorry. Uh, so uh, Dr. Naeem Engel and uh, Dr. Asadullah Bukti. I request all of them to please take the chairs as panelists. Uh, Farhan, one second. And Not all people are here, so let me request a few others to come over. Dr. Rashid, you want to come, please come. Um, Nasir, please come over. And who else would like to? Jabbar, you want to? Uh, Jabbar, you can come here. That's okay. Okay, go ahead, please. Can call Dr. Iftikhar or Dr. Ghulam Sulmakan if any one of them is there. Yes, Dr. Iftikhar is here, so he's going to come and present his case. So, the topic of his case is Nightmare in the Cat Lab, uh, Stent Dislodgement. So, so I'm Dr. Iftikhar Ayman. Uh, a very welcome to all of you and uh, Salaam Alaikum to all of you. Uh, uh, I'm presenting this case of uh, 58 years uh, gentleman who is hypertensive and smoker. He presented in the emergency department of uh, Hyderabad Satellite Center with uh, presenting complaint of six hours duration, typical chest pain, and he was hemodynamically stable in emergency department. Uh, EKG was done which showed inferior ST elevation MI along with RV infarct. Uh, there were no arrhythmias on ECG. He was taken to the cath lab after giving standard pre-PCI medications and after taking consent for the PCI. Thank so uh, these are uh, the left system, angiogram of the left system. So the left system uh, had some disease in the circumflex artery and there was uh, moderate disease in the mid LAD. And this is the uh, RCA, which is the culprit artery uh, so the RCA was uh, totally occluded from the um, uh, distal part and so the PCI was uh, started and uh, BMW uh, JR guiding catheter was taken and a workhorse wire crossed the lesion and it was pre-dilated. So uh, this was the angiogram after the pre-dilatation. Pre-O uh, 30 millimeter uh, stent is taken afterwards. Uh, but unfortunately, the stent uh, did not cross from the mid part of the RCA. And it was realized that it was a bit calcified. So stent was uh, removed. Uh, but there was uh, some uh, um, uh, failing of greatness when it was uh, pulled and uh, this was the result after pulling the stent, uh, uh, the stent balloon came out and uh, the stent was uh, dislodged in the proximal to mid part of RCA. So we had two types of options either to leave this stent uh, here and to, uh, since the wire was there, so um, one option was to deploy the stent over here and the second was to retrieve the stent. Uh, we uh, went for the second option and we tried to retrieve. Initially we took the small size balloon catheter. We took the small size balloon which was 1.5 into 15 millimeter balloon and uh, unfortunately it did not cross the uh, stent and it stuck at that lesion. Uh, so we went for the second option. Uh, uh, the second option could have been a retrieval of the stent via snare but uh, uh, snare was not uh, uh, present at the cath lab at that time. So uh, we used wire twirling technique in which we took three wires and twisted them with the same um, torquer and it did the trick. So on the right side, uh, all of the stent along with the wire was uh, removed and uh, it was kept inside the guide catheter and whole of the assembly was uh, removed from the radial.
So the check injection was taken and it did not show any dissection and there was TIMI 2 to 3 flow. So uh, since this case was done in the middle of the night, so uh, he was kept on medications and after one week, uh, uh, the lesion was prepared and stented uh, the whole area. Patient is doing uh, well after four months of follow-up. Uh, this is the final slide. Uh, we have two types of option in the uh, management. Okay. Thank you very much. If you have any question, you can ask. So uh, I have a, you know, a little comment to make. Uh, whenever you advance the stand and then you have to pull it back, uh, you have to make sure when the stand is close to, uh, is close to the guide cat and is about to be re uh, retrieved back into the guide cat, that's the time where the you know, edges of the stand they get, you know, with the they hit the edge of the uh, guide cat and then they can get feared and get, you know, uh, get lost. So uh, if one has to be very careful that guide cat should be very coaxial. Uh, uh, yes, I would request the panelists, uh, anyone can have any comments? Yes, uh, I think that for the fellows, um, I'm Dr. Kaleem from Karachi. Uh, I think that this is a very good lesson for the fellows to learn about. And they have to read the angiogram before proceeding for any interventions. Na? So the RCL though totally occluded, but clearly, clearly calcified, there's a tortuous vessel. You can see a very severe calcification at the pain. So you required a lady before proceeding to PCI, you have to prepare for the good support. Um, I don't know, okay, uh, JR guide, you can uh, switch this to the AL guide before proceeding, or you can take uh, two wires for the support. Um, which similar balloon uh, you have taken for retrieval? Uh, uh, I used 1.5 into 15 millimeter balloon, which was the smallest balloon available in the cath lab. And what are the techniques that you have? I, I, I saw that when the balloon was in the middle of the middle of the stand. Uh, yes, it was not cross. Uh, it did not cross distal to the stand. So I uh, opted the other option. Uh, my uh, uh, my goal was uh, to cross the balloon. Um, away from the stent and then to inflate it and pull the whole of the assembly um, uh, so that the stent can be uh, retrieved. Uh, but the balloon did not cross the distal okay. part of the stent, so I quit uh, then, uh, that balloon. We can, we can actually proceed with further. If patient is symptomatic, if your artery has not been opened, you can't actually leave it like that. When you have to apply another technique. So I did. You can crush the uh, stent there uh, with another wire, so you can uh, crush that one. Our uh, 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 micro seniors are not available, I think that in majority uh, of the cath lab. I did the other technique uh, of removing by uh, using the three wires, wire twirling technique. I, I don't know if you saw that technique or not. Uh, uh, the other thing that uh, um, micro, uh, snare was not, coronary micro snare was not available. That's why I used the second technique. Crushing or uh, to deploying the stent was the last option uh, on my mind. Uh, Dr. Afstreza, do you have any comments to make? What was the make of this stent? Which, was, which stent was this? Uh, this was uh, Endeavor stent. Okay, thank you. Uh, Just uh, 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 sorry, qu very quick comment. I think um, uh, Kaleem mentioned it uh, very well that you need to uh, basically preempt what can happen. This is a calcified, tortuous vessel. Uh, there's definitely going to be difficulties. I know in the acute setting, sometimes maybe uh, just balloon it or leave it alone and come back and do it. That is one option. But otherwise, you really need to prepare it very well to get the stand down. Another thing which you can do, actually there is disease before also, if your balloon doesn't go distal to it, even whatever balloon goes in, you just inflate over there with a one five balloon and then take a bigger balloon and just put it, just deploy the stent over there. And then you may be able to take the other stent uh, down quicker. But uh, great case, uh, you are able to get it out and uh, <laughs> didn't get into trouble. <laughs> so that's good. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So, is so. the cath lab ready? Can we go to the cath lab or? Okay, so let's go to the cath lab. Patient has a critical R, dominant RQA. Uh, 
match. And uh, first we have uh, first match with the uh, Toro Kipping match. Thank you, Alan. Can we see? Uh, now, next. This is uh, uh, in the class event and event film. We have first allocated it with uh, Toro MC. Next. 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 This is the final result. Then, uh, can you show us? Achha, next. The left. Can I have left corner here? Uh, this is the uh, left system. You can easily appreciate there is a critical distal left bone disease. Next. And here is a total occlusion of LED. In proximal part. So with this, uh, uh, basically, will you go again, Dr. Bashi? Yes, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. 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 Farhan Tayyab is moderating the case, so he can uh, continue. Uh, Dr. Farhan, General Farhan. So uh, I'll request the panelists to please uh, uh, give their views about the angiogram. So we have had a patient who had. And the plastic to RCA now we are uh, planning to do the left system. Yes, so, I think uh, this gentleman has got very tight uh, distal left main and possibly involving the ostia of both LED and circumflex. Is that circumflex or subluted disc because it is now wired, but the main thing that we can see is the distal stenosis in the left main stem, which is quite critical. So, uh, and uh, I don't know if we can see the other views to see if there is any calcification in the left system or not. Yes, there is a calcification by visible next to cranial defect. Cranial defect. Yes, yes, yes. There is a chunk of calcification and uh, there is maybe three zero the one for flight uh, track is uh, obvious, but we have decided to go by uh, bilateral cannulation because uh, LED can be traced from RCA uh, quite clearly up to the this occlusion area. So we can see that uh, left cornea RTA is filling from the right. Okay. And what is your analysis? Is this a recent occlusion or this is a chronic total occlusion? And wire behaves because we went with the intermediate wire that is pilot 50. So with slight manipulation, it went easily. So probably this seems to be an acute and chronic occlusion. And uh, so uh, once you have what, do, what, what are your plans about uh, stenting? So this is a patient with the uh, diffuse disease in the proximality, which of course had a total occlusion. Then there is a distal disease in the left brain stem. Left brain stem itself seems to be severe disease. And we have a non-dominant circumflex here, which the ostium of circumflex doesn't appear to be severely diseased. So what will be your strategy? Farhan, let's, uh, let's take some comments from the panelists and see what would they do or what do they think. Uh, Nasir, uh, if you were doing the case, so would you have done? So what we are dealing with is a severe three-vessel coronary artery disease. Uh, they have fixed the right and still we are dealing, uh, we are left with uh, three bifurcations. Three bifurcations. Uh, I can see a collateral to going to circumflex from the right as well as to the LED and there is a left main disease. So I think uh, if we will have to fix then first the imaging is very important because we are dealing with the left main disease and then there is a diffuse disease in LED to see what is the exact size of LED, whether there is osteal involvement of circumflex and what is the left main size. I think the imaging will guide us uh, how to decide the strategy. Asad, what would be your first wire to use in this case? For LED, uh, uh, I would prefer to uh, use some polymer coated wire, especially Scion Blake. Uh, in, in this case, it was seeming. We can, uh, we can start with a simple wire. Uh, if it doesn't work, then probably some Pilot 50 or Pilot 100. Uh, that is one that, uh, we, to, that can to, be to tried. Me, it was uh, like acute and chronic. Uh, so, um, in, in my practice, I used to. Um, um, prefer a Scion Blake in these type of cases and usually uh, that goes well. Um, after wiring the LED and the circumflex, uh, as Dr. Nasser said, the next step I would prefer to uh, do some 
uh, imaging to decide uh, for the stranding strategy for this bifurcation. Um, in, in, in our practice, uh, usually I uh, prefer a DK crush in case of uh, um, bifurcation involvement, especially in the left main. Okay, Farhan, go ahead, please. So, uh, can uh, do uh, any other panelists have to make any comments about this? Of course, you can address <coughs> the other panelists if they have any comments to make. Uh, uh, can I make a comment? Uh, 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 Dr. Bashir? Yes. Uh, can I make a comment? Uh, yeah, I think. Uh, uh, Jabbar was, has a comment. Uh, I want to see. Uh, regarding the wire, uh, I think uh, I would have taken because it was uh, almost subtotal or versus total occlusion. Uh, and regarding the uh, decision, uh, uh, ideally imaging, uh, uh, but uh, uh, the osteum of the circumflex and the uh, ramus is not very much disease. If we apply definition criteria uh, of a complex bifurcation, then I would go for a um, uh, single crossword stenting from uh, left main to LED. Uh, one comment okay. I want to make. Circumflex doesn't look to be a larger vessel. RCA looks to be super dominant. So from the beginning, uh, should we consider the two stent strategy or a single stent strategy? Will be preferred here. Uh, if imaging not available in the cat lab. So, Javed, you tell us what's your plan and what wire and why you are using that wire. Uh, our plan was initially to oh, uh, balloon this uh, tight region and then do an IVS to see whether circ uh, osteum is healthy or uh, uh, definitely we were planning after looking at the circ osteum. We did IVS of uh, both vessels, LED and circ. Can you have an IVS image, please? Adrian. Okay. And can we have a look at the iOS images, please? And what was your uh, interpretation of the iOS images? Uh, it shows that uh, uh, circostium is quite uh, clear. Or uh, with this result, we have decided to go for provisional extending. But as LED segment is very long, we have started we extend this segment. It is a uh, 27538. And can, now, can you can you show us the images as a, because you're just stuck on one so keep uh, showing us the images or so you're showing the can oh, I was can you put the iris in the center the can you bring yeah the no, no yes. that's better okay and just tell us from where did you started start uh, the distal LED or mid LED Okay. okay. Uh, so this, uh, I was, I was going on, and uh, what you see on fluoroscopic images after ballooning, this is the. Uh, uh, at the moment, we are looking at the IVAS image. So, what was the size of the left main? Left main seems to be uh, 4 3.5 to 4 between 3.5 And what was the size of the LED? Uh, this part is 3.5 uh, proximal segment and uh, 2 center or 3 o distal segment. Next, please. Okay, and how was the osteum of the circumflex? Uh, it was healthy. Osteum of circumflex was healthy. So, in such a situation, your plan would be to do a provisional stenting? So, now, I put a distant to central 38 in distal to mid LED. And our plan was now clear, it was physical extending. Yes. Then we put another 3 5, uh, 38 stand. Yes. So you have uh, stented till the ostium or you have spared the ostium of the left main stem? It appears that you did not come to the ostium. Uh, ostium is quite covered. Yeah. Ostium is covered. Four fibers. We did have us after this painting. Four fibers. This is for before post validation. Now we are recrossing the wire, and then we will do post validation. Post that. Uh, have you done the proximal op optimization? No, no, we 
we are just now post dilatation. We will do post dilatation and then uh, pot. Uh, up till now, what have you seen? We have this thing. Now, what we plan? We recross the sir. But do you want to do a uh, pot before recrossing into the circumflex? That there is a quite good flow in circumflex. We are not much worried of circumflex at this stage. It appears that flow in the circumflex has been compromised to some extent. Uh, you may what say. The comments of the panelists, please. You give some uh, nitro and see, probably might gum up with the better uh, flow and diameter. So. Dr. Muzaffar Ali is also in the panelists. Uh, Dr. Muzaffar, do you have any comments on that? So, Javed, what's the uh, size uh, post? Have you, have you, are you done with post dilatation in the left main? We are just doing it. We are just doing part and we plan to uh, take a 4 NC. Okay. And you are going to, uh, what was the size of the left main when you did the IVAS? Uh, before reporting the stent in, did you check or? Yes, it, 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 it was uh, 4 to 4.5. 4 to, it was 4 to 4.5. 4 to, uh, maybe you can say 4.2 or 4.3. So you are doing a pot now, before you recross into the circumflex. Yes. So, which wire do you plan to use for recrossing? So I think, I think the left circ doesn't look bad. So after post dilatation, I'll see if they need to do anything. Um, Javed, do you have other case in the other lab you want to show, or this is the only one you will be showing? This time we just ended half an uh, 10, 15 minutes back in VR. So the Sahir, I think we are going to show that. Um, So, Dr. Javed, my question is that if you have a compromise of circumflex ostium, what are your plans then? How will you retrieve it? It's a very limited uh, option available. And uh, all we have is uh, the option once we have uh, compromised flow in the circumflex. Probably uh, in the back of our mind, in my team, we will go for F if uh, we compromise. Oh, in fact. So you plan to really do either a tap or uh, a Q lot? Uh, probably we'll go for tap. Okay. Yeah. At this stage, what do you think? What panelists think that uh, are we everything is all right? So we are still looking at the state frame. We do not know. Uh, if you can, we have some a better yeah. picture, please. Can you show us the last final shot? I think, Doctor right. Farhan, decision about circum uh, circostal would only be more easy after post dilatation of the stent of uh, belladi and left main and rewiring of LCX. Only then we can, we can decide whether we have to stent the circ or not before yes. post dilatation a bit, bit oh. early. I think Sir Costi was clear of disease if there is no significant flow problem and uh, uh, no critical uh, narrowing or then maybe left alone. You may not have to go for um, another stent there. But let's assume if you have to put a stent in there. Uh, sir, what, uh, what would you do? Oh, you would. Uh, I think we have two options. Uh, I would prefer uh, the either. Provisional or T stand probably is is my preference will be, but there are other options too. Like uh, we can do uh, probably cool out also, but uh, I think there is a, a disparity between the diameter. So I think provisional uh, uh, the step step will be probably a preferable. Uh, uh, General Farhan, second lab is ready. I think you can be moved to that lab till we complete. Okay, then we'll do final result. Okay. But, um, but I agree with uh, Vishir, where we must see is there anything on the ostium, a good yeah. uh, injection with nitrates, and then see if the. the... 
Uh, I will request Bashir, uh, Dr. Bashir to please take us to the other lab. Hello, Dr. Bashir. Uh, can Dr. you hear us, please? Yeah, we can hear you and Dr. Farhan is moderating, so you can go ahead and uh, just uh, tell us the history and everything. Okay. So, we it, actually... It yourself and the case, please. As we have completed this case. I'm Dr. Naim. I welcome you all from the second lab. This is my team. My fellow Dr. Dilip and Dr. Shahzad with my nursing staff. Uh, this case is uh, uh, that of a 50 years old gentleman. He is hypertensive and overweight. He presented to our ER, Emergency Department, with history of chest pain uh, for that of two hours. So, uh, ECG was constant with the inferior wall MI. So, we uh, shifted the patient of the initial protocol of uh, dual antiplatelets we given the patient in the ER. The patient was virtually stable and we shifted the patient and we took the patient within 25 minutes uh, to the cath lab. So, I'm going to show you the uh, recorded. Any. So, uh, this is the left bone system. Next, there is no significant disease in the left cell. And there is uh, the co dominant system, co dominant RCA. You can see that uh, the pelvis are coming from the left to left axis. And you can see there is a mild disease in the proximal segment of the uh, LAT. Next. Next. So, uh, we took JR guider. And after wiring with BMW, uh, you can see the flow was established. Next. So, but hold on, please. Uh, I would request the panelists to please guide how will they plan this angioplasty. So, this is a, an acute situation, and they have uh, the seen that angiogram is a total occlusion of the right coronary artery. How will they uh, plan this angioplasty? Please, I need comment from the panel. Dr. Afar Raza, please. Yes, I uh, I'm not seeing the larger screen, but. Uh, it's the total inclusion acute MI, so we have crossed the wire, and we will see if there is a thrombus burden, then we can also uh, decide whether to aspirate or not, although it is not strongly so, recommended. So, sir, my time. question, uh, that's what I was going to ask everyone, uh, how often uh, you use aspiration? Uh, I know at NSCVD they were using quite frequently, and I'm going to ask Naeem also later on. No, but uh, I, I think the latest, uh, the, the, if we follow the guidelines, there is no recommendation because of the it's, high incidence of stroke. It's class 3 according to the guidelines. Yes, that's correct. And uh, unless it is really necessary with the large thrombus burden and it, that is jeopardized in the flow, then probably that is the indication which we follow here. So any of the panelists yeah. here would be using uh, aspiration? Uh, 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 yeah, yeah, I, I want to uh, discuss about that. In our lab, we uh, don't use uh, aspiration catheter frequently, but in selective cases when we have large thrombus burden. The interesting study recently published in the sky, they uh, have shown the difference in infarct size. Because theoretically speaking, the main thing we had in our mind that um, with the use of this aspiration catheter, we may uh, reduce the distal embolization that would uh, lead to decrease infarct size and that would lead to uh, decrease long-term and short-term outcomes. But this recent study, this was the first study that compared the uh, CMR infarct size um, uh, between two groups used through expression catheter versus uh, without expression catheter. So, um, paradoxically, they showed the infarct size were larger in those patients which they have used the aspiration catheter. And they have shown the long-term outcome as well, uh, that there was no difference either with the use of uh, aspiration catheter or without. And even they have um, uh, sub-analysis with the thrombus grades as well that even a large thrombus burden has uh, no uh, impact on the use of aspiration catheter. So in our lab, we, we don't really use the aspiration catheter in um, ischemic cases. Okay, thank you. I think let's uh, go ahead. Uh, in this case, definitely there's not much uh, thrombus at all. And now the question is, would you go for primary stenting or uh, balloon it before? Uh, I think uh, in such patients, one has to remember that RCAs, generally they, are, they look smaller within the in setting of acute MI. You have to give plenty of nitrate just to uh, get the right size of the RCA. Okay. So, I, I, I just request the operator, did they give some nitrate to this patient? Yeah, we actually, nitrate really doesn't help much uh, in no reflow situation. 
we quite commonly use uh, nipride and adenosine just before uh, inflating the balloon i personally do it or even just uh, if i do stent before stenting i give them some nipride or adenosine and that does help uh, significantly to decrease the norepinephrine although there is no study but we have seen that no uh, i think but, uh, nitrate is important to size the vessel uh, yeah for sizing it is better to give nitrates uh, especially in this case okay before so before giving nitrate in this patient i would say that must review the ecgs for r that either the patient has the only inferior or associated right ventricular infarction uh, it, it will be evident from the pressure uh, tracing if the pressure is okay i think uh, then we can give it and sorry uh, can i ask uh, is the flow established Mike. with the wire or you balloon it up we didn't no. see i don't Mike, then, yeah. it looks like the flow got established with the wire with the wire yeah the problem is uh, with regards to bashir's question that direct stenting uh, if uh, the if we clearly see the uh, the adopt me that the it is disease free after the obstruction then i think uh, and there is no visible calcium then uh, direct stenting can be done with a longer slightly longer uh, stent uh, but if uh, it depends on how we see yeah. if the not me is clear then i think is uh, pre dilate with millimeter or yeah no i nice. agree that pr primary stenting can be done but we try to actually use the uh, whatever minimum you minimum you do in acute mi setting because taking longer stents and more problems i we try to use a kind of a smaller stent instead of longer uh, if if we can avoid it um but okay go ahead uh, name tell yeah, us yeah, because we have 5 minutes uh, of transmission uh, something My which question. problem with the shorter stent is sometimes you just miss the post still to the stent or area okay. zubair is, zubair question to all the panelists is regarding the routine use of 2b3 a blocker in acute mi setting what are your practice uh we i can tell you our practice we don't use it anymore the only time we used to use was basically uh, if patient did not receive any at platelets and we could give it in the cath lab but nowadays we give ticagrel or so in the cath lab so that um, we have stopped using it i i don't remember myself uh when i used it last time uh i don't know how about uh, other um officer you do you use in uk quite often and the faran which one uh, sorry what 2b3a we are 2b3a no uh, uh, we don't we don't use routinely unless the the uh, uh, dosing the prime if it is not prime with the dual antiplatelets then we we can give one dose of uh, starter 2b3a and it was interesting to see the 5 cu uh, uh, today's talk the subcutaneous in injection that that was very interesting actually okay uh, uh, let's go about uh, continue to use to be three inhibitors especially we have a very short balloon go to balloon time generally about 40 minutes so uh, and uh, i carry all is still not in wide use uh, in our uh, hospital so we continue to use So okay. uh, I would request the operator to let us know what is the size of stent they plan to implant. With regards to anti platelets, in uh, you uh, see in the, our setting, we follow the yeah, latest guidelines. We, we can you just show we, us we, the we next clips, please? Uh, Name, we can't hear you, but just keep showing us the clips, please. Next, please. Next. Next. Seems to be a very good result. we post dilate this okay they did yeah a lot of times if you really try to post dilate and that's when you get no reflow so that's think, where we think, use quite yeah, judiciously yeah. use uh, um nipride and adenosine and vasodilators to open up the distal bed to prevent uh, no reflow okay so do you want to move to the other lab quickly show us the last picture because we are over uh, done with the time is uh, over so we have to move on to the cases we are back to you please uh, tell us what has happened since we left just keep showing okay. us the pictures so they are they are post dilated picture in the spider view uh, after we part the scene uh we took Third wire and uh, and recross it. Next piece. Oh, left main, left main looks left main looks smaller than the LED. Yeah. 
<laughs> the stand seems to be quite under expanded. Then we did consolidation with 3.5 that is I was guided. Next, please. Javed, just quickly show us the end result because we have to move on. Uh, the time is over. We have to move on to the cases. Now we are doing uh, follow up IVAS. And after that, we, may, uh, we will take an empty balloon uh, with guidance of that IVAS. What size balloon have you taken for the left main stem till now? Oh, yeah. I think you definitely need a bigger balloon, four, five, or even five. I don't know if you start with four, five. It's much smaller if you look at uh, the rest of the because vessels. Can, uh, so you will do. Yeah. For on, we will have to end here and move on to the cases, please. Thank you very much, uh, MSCB Cath Lab. We enjoyed the cases. Both the cases were excellent, and we Thank now. You, uh, yeah, thank you, Farhan. Uh, Bashir, uh, just uh, with regards to your question about anti-platelets, uh, here we, in, in the setting of primary uh, MI, uh, on acute MI, we, we give Prezogril, and that is the preferable uh, choice according to the latest guidelines. Yeah, we don't have, unfortunately, available. Prezogril came here in Pakistan with a big bang and then suddenly disappeared. Uh, so we don't have it available in Pakistan anymore, unfortunately. You should try and struggle to get one. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, um, uh, Javed, um, Dr. Samad, uh, Naim, and all the team. Uh, great two cases, acute MI as well as uh, 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 left main LED. Okay, Farhan. So, uh, we, we are back to the fellows cases. Uh, do, do we have Dr. Avas Farhad ready now? Or, yeah. Uh, yeah, he's available. He's coming. Okay. So I request Dr. Avas to please stay, come to the podium and present his case. And the title of his case is Guide Catheter and Guide Extension Five for Thrombus Aspirate. So, Asalaamu Alaikum. Uh, I'm Dr. Avaz Farhad. I'm an Intervention Cardiology Fellow at Aakha University Hospital. Today, we'll be discussing a case of aspiration thrombectomy using Guide Catheter and Guide Extension in uh, a large thrombus burden in vein graph. So, we've got a 44 years old gentleman having multiple comorbids. He had a coronary artery bypass graft in 2010 with a Lima graft and SVG to OM and SVG to right PDA. Now he came with the CCS3 angina. The symptoms were not improving with optical medical therapy and the LV function was normal, so an angiogram was advised. So here we can see the native coronaries. You can see that there is a, uh, the CERC is patent, but, the, but there is, uh, we can't see the second OM over here, and there is a uh, complete blockage of the osteal LAD. Moreover, in the right uh, coronary artery, there is complete occlusion of the right coronary artery. With the Lima graft, the Lima graft is patent uh, with good distal flow, uh, but uh, as you can see in the next image, there is a moderate disease in the apical LAD, and there we've got some collaterals to the right post posterior lateral vessel. The vein graft, the SVG to PDA seems patent uh, with good uh, distal flow. It is also giving collaterals to the second OM. Which, was not, which we were not able to see in the native uh, vessel angiography. And now we've got this uh, SVG to OM uh, graft, which is totally occluded, and we have a suspicion that there might be a large thrombus burden. So the challenge is, what do we do when we have a large, as when we are expecting a large thrombus burden? There are high chances of no reflow, high risk of embolization, and uh, whether we will be op able to open this vessel because of this large thrombus burden. Now, the other option is to go through the native coronary artery. But it is an anti intervention, and uh, more than 10 years have passed for the, for, uh, for the last uh, intervention, and uh, it might be difficult uh, to go anti -grade. We decided to go for PCI of SVG. Uh, here you can see that it was wired with a hydrophilic wire and a, uh, and a workhorse wire as a buddy wire. Uh, we did uh, thrombus aspiration using thrombuster. A large amount of thrombus was aspirated, but still there was uh, not a good flow. Then we used this, uh, the guide catheter, which was a JR47 French guide catheter. We deep-throated it, and we did direct suction from the guide catheter. And after that, you can see that there is some improvement in the flow. 
After that, what we did was we used a guide liner, six French, and uh, using that, we did suction from the guide catheter using the side port of uh, the three-way uh, three valve. And after that suction, you can see that there is a good improvement of uh, flow in the SFNS vein graft. We then uh, placed three stents in the SFNS vein graft. After that, you can see that we've got a good flow, we've got uh, good results, but there is still some thrombus in the uh, vein graft. And uh, we decided to pay, keep the patient on GP2B3A inhibitor infusion for the next 48 hours. After 48 hours, we, br we brought back the patient, we did a, uh, an angiogram, we post dilated the, uh, the stents, and then uh, after that, you can see that there is a good results of the vein graft PCI. Uh, after that, we also kept the patient again on GP2B3A inhibitors. We were afraid that of uh, reformation of thrombus. Even though we don't see any high-risk features there, but still, just to be on the safe side, we went ahead with it. So, Guideliner 6 French has a larger internal lumen compared to Thrombuster 6 French. It is soft and flexible, and because of above characteristics, it can be used to remove large thrombus where conventional aspiration catheters fail are, are not feasible. And the other day I saw the neurointervention lectures of, uh, by Dr. Asim, and I think we can use those uh, catheters, aspiration catheters that are used in inter uh, neurointervention can also be tried in these cases. Uh, thank you all. Uh, he has, uh, he had a recent start of CCS3 angina, so I would, uh, uh, he did not have any uh, changes on echo, so I would say that it was recent, but uh, not, uh, not labeled as MI. See, uh, the thing is that uh, they're doing, so, it was uh, 2010, so it's more than 10 years. You see, uh, but from yesterday also, officer, uh, yesterday also the, all the CTO operators and they were talking about it, that we should not be doing the vein grafts anymore, especially if it is already 10 to 15 years uh, earlier. Uh, this is the best way, again, uh, we have limited operators, but the retrograde, I know anti-grade may not be difficult, may be difficult, but going through the graft and getting the retrograde, very nice collaterals over there. The patency, although it's a very good result and excellent on, um, I would say, luminology, but the problem is this is the patency rate in this kind of a graft with thrombus, all full of thrombus is very, very small. It's okay. less than probably 50, so. 30 percent. So I would suggest and request that this kind of patients, under, unless it's an acute setting, uh, if you can do it, that's very good. But if you can't do it, this kind of cases should be referred to places where they can do retrograde D and benefit the patient because definitely, uh, probably within a few months, this graft is going to close down again. If you are able to go through uh, this graft retrogradely and open that circ, the results are going to be much better. So uh, this patient did have a follow-up after one year, and he was fine clinically, but we did not do an angiography. Uh, moreover, I agree, anti-gradely if we had used, I was to find out the nub where the OM was uh, arising, then we would have, uh, that would have been a bit helpful. These are ideal cases for retrograde as well, actually. There's yeah. a good uh, collaterals going as well. Yeah. And again, it's good. <laughs> it's not acute. It's not acute. Uh, officer, he had CCS3 angina, no enzymes. It was not ACS. Okay, right. Yeah, yeah. So that's what uh, I'm sir, saying. Sir, I have, a, I have one comment. There is no place to place any regular patient because of the device. Regarding acute setting, uh, uh, to answer Dr. Afsar Raza. Uh, that even in acute setting, as this was the case, you just recanalize the uh, graft by um, exp export, exporting some thrombus and leave the patient on GP2B3A and bring him back after um, a week or so, and you can do retrograde intervention. And in this case, despite of aspiration, the one thing uh, in STEMI, uh, cases we must do long cine in the end to see the uh, Timmy blush grade because it is well correlated with the uh, tissue level viability and long term outcomes. And even in this case, despite they have aspirated much of thrombus, um, um, I believe that uh, despite that most of the thrombus has gone distal to the distal bed and has uh, damaged the myocardium. And then at the same time putting these long stands, uh, uh, risk of uh, 
uh, thrombosis and uh, long-term outcome, long-term patency are uh, again the same questions. So for acute settings, yes, you can aspirate the thrombus and uh, leave the patient on GP2B3A and bring him back to assess for the um, native vessel uh, recanalization, either anti-grade or uh, retrograde via grafts. Okay, for our next, let's move on to the next. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Assalamualaikum and a very good morning to everyone. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I will present a case with anti-grade and retrograde filling, adding to the misery of coronary artery perforation. My patient was a 50, 46 years of age male who was a non-diabetic and hypertensive and he was evaluated for angina class 3. His echocardiogram showed LV ejection fraction of 40% and thallium scan showed viability of 7 out of 10 with severe peri-defect ischemia. He remained on, on significant, uh, he had significant symptoms despite guideline directed medical treatment. He was offered coronary artery bypass grafting, but he, opt, uh, he opted for PCI and declined the cabbage. This is the coronary angiogram. We can clearly see that LED is occluded at the ostium, and there are Rentrop class 3 collaterals from the RCA. Because coronary artery bypass grafting was declined by the patient, so PCI to LED was planned with dual injection technique. The left coronary artery was engaged with 7 front guiding catheter and right with the 6 front catheter. There were some micro channels that can be visualized from the LED to the diagonal and I tried to cross the lesion with a filter XT wire and it was successful. Now we can see a filter XT wire in the diagonal and it was exchanged with a run through wire using a micro catheter. I tried to Engage, uh, enter into the LED using various uh, workhouse wires, but every wire was prolapsing into the diagonal. So, a non prolapsing tapering end wire, Concus Pro, was used to enter into the LED ostium, and then a microcaster was used, and the LED was negotiated with filter XT and finally exchanged with run through wire. This is after crossing the LED. I was very excited when I was able to cross the LED, but unfortunately, uh, when I took the next picture, there was a perforation at the distal end of a diagonal. If we, see, if we see this picture, we can see a beautiful loop at the end of uh, diagonal wire, but it's, it's something surprising that this loop is too big for a small caliber diagonal. So my all excitement was gone when I saw, th saw this loop. So uh, patient was hemodynamically stable and uh, I continued with the procedure and ultimately patient had uh, patient developed cardiac tamponade and I had to put in a pigtail catheter to drain the pericardial fluid and procedure was continued. I, sir, I tried to seal the perforation while using a prolonged balloon inflation but uh, that didn't work, so I plan to change it to the micro catheter and deploy the micro coil, which is a sure and secure way of sealing a distal wire perforation. 
I uh, put a microcatcher there. We can. I put a microcatcher and try to deploy the coil. And when I tried to deploy the coil, it was entangled with the wire which was used to deliver the coil. And when I pulled the catheter, the microcatcher back, the coil came back. And this is the true manifestation of what you call out of frying pan into the fire. Now I have a coil in the left main, and coil has started its good work of thrombosis at a wrong place. And there is a perforation at the distal end of the diagonal. So I tried to retrieve this coil by using uh, end snare, but unfortunately that could not capture it. The best option could have been alligator snare or biopsy forces, but unfortunately that was not available. So I tried to balloon trap it, but despite multiple attempts, it was also unsuccessful. And there was a thrombus formation in the left main and LED, and it was a definitive and imminent impending doom. Then I thought of using the push and paste technique. I tried to push the uh, coil by using a wire, but that didn't work. Then I pushed it with a partially inflated balloon, and I was able to successfully push this coil into the LED by using a partially inflated balloon. Now I was confronted with three challenges. There is a distal wire perforation in the diagonal, a coil in the proximal left system, and thrombus formation. So, in this situation, the only option that I had in my mind was to use a cover stand that will paste the thrombus and coil behind it, and it will seal the perforation, uh, perforated diagonal. So I successfully deployed a cover stand that sealed the ostium of the diagonal, and we, I had a good flow in the diagonal and uh, in the LED. And thrombus was also pasted out. But the mystery was not end over. We can see some cross filling from the left uh, system, which is still feeding the perforated vessel. And there was still developing tamponade. So, so, all the patient was observed in the cath lab, all the anticoagulation was reversed after taking the uh, wires and catheters out, and fortunately, this perforation was sealed after 30 minutes. Hemopericardium, it stopped after 30 minutes and anti when anticoagulation was fully reversed. This patient was kept in regular follow-up and monitoring, and after two years, patient again started having angina, and this is the angiogram, that is the recent one and patient is again unwilling for surgery. <laughs> I conclude by saying the saddest thing about betrayal is that it never comes from the enemies. I had wire perforation with the workhouse wire while Kramkas Pro did not do any harm. While deploying a microcatheter, always make sure that coil is completely deployed and detached from the microcatheter and distal tip of where uh, uh, micro coil is free from the micro catheter. Hemopericardium may persist and lead to tamponade from the central lateral even when the anti-grade filling is blocked. And keep low threshold for repeat angiogram if cover scent is deployed because it has a high chance of ISR. I thank you all. Thank you very much, Afan, because it's from your center, so I'm going to take it. <laughs> <laughs> now, <laughs> uh, you see, it's, it's a very interesting case, uh, definitely. Um, again, everyone has its own way of dealing. Uh, I could have probably considered try, try to um, uh, inject fat or something down there and try to see if I could seal that. Obviously, this kind of complication can occur. My only concern was that there was still dissection at the proximal edge of the stent in the left main. And uh, there was a disease in the circle also. I know you wanted to cover and finish that complication at that time, but that was definitely sure shot that uh, that left main is going to close down. It was a luckily separate ostium, you can say, and that's why probably the LED closed off and the circ stayed open 
otherwise that uh, if it was a left main it could have really caused the occlusion of both the vessels circ and the left um, um, uh, left anterior descending artery <laughs> so i think any quick comments from the panel then we have to move on i think uh, 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 one thing very important uh, we have to be very good at the basics why it happened we have to look at the cause why it happened i think every case should be taken seriously of the cat lab whoever is doing and when, once we are wiring it the distal part of our, of our wires should be in the very safe zone yeah, that's because uh, LED is, you know, a branch, uh, diagonal is a branch of LED. Yeah. So we don't need to go so distally uh, to, to get uh, to see such no. a scene. I think uh, always the basics should be right to avoid such complications, such nightmares. That's I think excellent. I was taking the same point uh, as Dr. Bashir said. Uh, left main LED ostium looked hazy at that point. Uh, and the left main stenting was an option to avoid such complications further and uh, we, we could have dealt uh, provisionally at that yeah, point. That's an excellent point. I keep reminding my fellows all the time that they are focusing on that stenting and balloon and the guide but they are often forget where the distal end of the wire is. So this, this could be a kind of a very painful complication, distal wire perforation because to seal that could be a major, major problem and you have to stay there for hours and I think all of us has probably seen that and gone through it. But I think the best way to prevent complications is, is to treat anything is to prevent the complication and take all the precautions. Jabbar, you had the point uh, before you… Uh, 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 that is important, uh, guide, to see the guide and distal wire. Uh, regarding how to deal with such a case is, uh, uh, I saw one case uh, in EuroVCR, then I did uh, myself in uh, our cat lab. Uh, what we did, uh, we cut a balloon and then we mounted yeah. on the wire and push it with another balloon. Yeah, and uh, it did uh, work and uh, it is one of the easy way and uh, less expensive. Yeah, I think uh, they shared the case, that case yeah. also. That, that's a good thing. Kalim, the last comment. And when you have a perforation, uh, while you have a peri hemopericardium, how you dealt with uh, heparin uh, after thrombus formation? How you dealt with that one? Did you have reversed the heparin and… No, I did not reverse the anticoagulation because uh, once you have the gadgets inside like wires and catheters, there are high chances of thrombosis. Rather, I maintained ACT between 250 and 300 and while continued the procedure in LAD. And uh, anticoagulation should be only reversed once you have taken the wires and balloons and catheters out of the coronaries because thrombosis has high chances of mortality as compared to the perforation. Secondly, uh, perforation is a mechanical problem. It won't just stop by reversing the anticoagulation. There are some minor perforation that can actually seal with reversal, but if you have class 5, LS class 5 perforation, it's very less likely that it will stop automatically without any mechanical intervention. Okay. So this was my thought. So I, That's fine. I continued with the procedure. I maintained anticoagulation with uh, ACT of 250 to 300. Thank you. Thank as you. As well as that question of uh, coming back to the LED, yes, this patient yes. was in the lab for quite a long time and the uh, patient was not uh, that much stable. So. I did not want to prolong the procedure anymore. And I observed the patient for 30 minutes in the lab and took the final picture once uh, the procedure was stopped and there was no further collection of the fluid. And this patient was kept in on regular monitoring and when he developed symptoms, his angiogram is done. Okay, thank you very much. I think we have to move on to the next case. And uh, Farhan, there's actually a little bit changed, so I'm just going to announce the next person who is going to come to just uh, uh, present his case is Dr. Gyan Chand. Uh, Dr. Gyan Chand, uh, these are the two cases actually we couldn't do it on first day, so we are going to quickly present probably one in this and one in next session. Can we put on the uh, presentation please? Assalamualaikum, I am Dr. Gyan Chand, Intervention Fellow in NICVD. In our experience in uh, coronary revascularization, uh, background history of my patient is the 76 years uh, male, known case of the diabetic for last 10 years and hypertension for 18 years. Also known case of the ischemic heart disease, diagnosed multivessel disease in 2008 
and uh, surgical revascularization uh, done on that time with the Lima to LAD and venous graft to RC and OM. On that time, ECHO was done that the preserve EF with the mild AS. Patient was remain in follow up. Uh, with the time, uh, patient has an, uh, progressively increased in aortic valve gradient. But in 2017, it became the symptomatic severe aortic valve stenosis. So, TAVI was done on that time by the Professor Tair Sagir and Professor Nadim Rizvi. Uh, by the 29 mm core valve and that post dilated with the 25 mm nucleus. Uh, patient was remain uh, stable and hospital course remain uncomplicated discharge. Again in October 2020, uh, patient admitted via the emergency with the diagnosis of the non STEMI with the TMI of 5 by 7. So we plan to run an angiogram. Uh, Uh, this is the, uh, we've done the coronary angiogram through the femoral approach. This is the jet can left. Uh, left system seemed to be 100%. Uh, this is the jet can right. Right coronary is the 100%. This is the lima. Uh, the TIMI3 flow seemed to be non-obstructive. Again, in the lateral view, for the insertion of the lima, it seemed to be non-obstructive TIMI3 flow good enough. This is the venous graft of the RCA. The TIMI3 flow seemed to be non-obstructive. This is the venous graft of the OM. It seemed to be 100 percent. It's likely seemed to be uh, CTO. So uh, we plan to fix the native uh, vessel, left man. Initially, Jatkan left guide was taken, unable to engage the left system, the upgraded with the 3O and 3.5 but unable to, then exchange the guide with uh, EVU 3O, non-selectively engage, advance the wire with BMW, by means of the anchoring balloon technique we en selectively engage the left system, done the balloon, restore the flow, this is the REMS, LAD and CERC was 100% as the before uh, review the CD. So done the balloon, so decide to fix the uh, left man to Ramos with uh, drug looting stand. This is the Zines, 3.5 into 15, uh, open at the nominal pressure. Then upgraded it uh, with the non-compliant, with the 408. This is the result. the TIMI3 flow. So patient uh, was remain uh, stable, uh, uncomplicated procedure. Uh, patient was in uh, follow-up and now is in follow-up. Patient is totally symptomatic free. So discussion, uh, uh, the prevalence of the coronary artery disease in TAVI patient, the TAVI patient with coronary artery disease, they people are uh, 40 to 75 percent with the coronary artery disease. And uh, the post-TAVI patients, uh, most of the time, they are 3.5 percent uh, the PCI rate. This is the international data. I just want to give uh, one comment. Whilst you are engaging the uh, right coronary artery graph, one should try and use body to the That gives better engagement and better presentation of the bone graph. And uh, I think you, uh, they should also should have tried to open up the native circumflex because the main graph is the circumflex was a good Okay. Uh, Dr. Bashir, I just want to uh, you know, because these procedures are increasing, TAVI and these valve replacement, these patients are more increasing in, 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 in numbers. When these patients come with ischemic heart disease, we have to fix the vessel. So what are the care generally about these valves to be taken care of while engaging the left or the right system while doing these cases in terms of uh, coronary event? Yeah, most of the time you are able to engage it. It takes a little bit of effort. Um, I don't know if you heard the talks uh, yesterday on structural heart disease uh, by Dr. Gert, uh, Tang and uh, uh, Dr. Forrest and uh, they were showing there is actually a very good uh, uh, TAVI aid uh, software which you can actually the, um, the program which you can load on your phone also. It gives a very good uh, there is also a recent Jack review also which shows very clearly tells you how to engage these arteries but most of the time like they were saying also, if you use uh, the smaller catheter like J, instead of JL4, you use like JL35 and write most of the time you are able to uh, engage it 
for angioplasty you sometimes you may require to use the support apna um, micro catheters right. to get in to get the support or enter the artery also it's it's going to be challenging but as soon as the time goes you will get more patients and you will gain the experience and everything but definitely you need to read about these things before you start doing these procedures one other thing which they actually mentioned very clearly uh, yesterday was that once you are done with angioplasty when you move the guide catheter out first leave the sh um, the guide wire inside and pull back your guide catheter over the guide wire and then take out the uh, through yes, the studs yes. because otherwise sometime when you pull the, the wire out and your guide can get stuck in the valve and you can damage the yeah, valve damage itself. The so you have to keep the wire and I saw the wire was taken out and the guide was removed later on so it's a good idea to remove the guide with the wire in place. Yes, okay, thank you. Thank you very thank much. You. I think we can go ahead and get one more quick case from yesterday, Dr. Uh, and then uh, we'll move on to the next session. Uh, ladies. Assalamualaikum, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you again for giving me the opportunity to present again. Uh, the type, my case title is a dicey left main PCI. Uh, so, begin with the case history. Uh, my pa a patient was an 81 years old female uh, with limited functional activities. She was mobilized at home, uh, but uh, for some of the activities of daily living, she required support. She was a known case of diabetes and hypertension and had a prior PCI to LED and RCA in 2009. She presented to our outpatient department with history of chest pain two weeks back. Her proponents at some other hospital were negative and uh, angiogram done which showed severe osteal left main which was heavily calcified and severe disease and diagonal while LED, RC and CERC were non-obstructive prior strengths or patent. Ejection fraction was normal and her syntax score was 15. Uh, she was advised cabbage versus PCI at some other hospital and the family altogether refused cabbage and they wanted an opinion on PCI so she, they came to our outpatient department. Considering her advanced age Single chest pain episode, subsequently asymptomatic, options of medical treatment versus PCI were discussed. Mm, with medical treatment, historical high mortality with severe left main, and we decided to proceed with PCI. Uh, so we took the access right radial 7 French, and uh, we had a, a right femoral axis also 4 French taken to keep IBP as a backup support. Guide taken was Jerskine uh, 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 JL3, uh, 7 French. And uh, considering uh, severe angiographic calcification, it was decided to proceed with rotational atherectomy upfront. So BMW wire was crossed, and subsequently, uh, rota wire was exchanged using microcatheter caravel. Uh, so, rotablation ablation with 1.75 mm burr done, keeping the guard outside. Again, uh, with microcatheter, rota wire was exchanged with BMW wire, and the lesion was pre-dilated with NC balloon 3.5 into 15 at 10 atmospheres. These are the post-pre-dilation images, both in the cranial and caudal views. Next step was IVUS done for vessel sizing and uh, the left main was around 4.5 so subsequent feed dilation was done with 4.5 mm NC balloon at 28 atmospheres. Uh, next step was Residue Onyx 3.5 into 30 deployed from left main to LED at 18 atmospheres. Again, diseng disengaging the guide. The 
Standard was highlighted in the LED segment with NC4012 at 24 atmospheres and in, in the left main NC4.512 at 28 atmospheres. Post, uh, post post violation, I was done and it showed well expanded and well opposed stents. This is the final result. Uh, so take home messages from, my, from this case uh, that percutaneous coronary interventions for left main disease has been historically very challenging but in contemporary era can be performed with uh, quite safety and quick recovery. Uh, the importance of appropriate case selection and pre-procedure planning cannot be overemphasized uh, regarding access and whether to take hemodynamic support or not. Uh, interventions guided by intracoronary imaging and particularly IVAS for left main disease, fractional, functional assessment by FFR when required. Debulking therapies like road ablation, cutting balloons, and mechanical support where necessary can lead to improve procedural outcomes. This concludes my presentation. Thank you very much. I think excellent case. Uh, just want to know uh, any reason for taking the jail guide? And uh, yesterday's uh, Dr. Bashir's comments. Uh, yeah, I think in this case it was true osteal and the needed to be used also. So with the rota, you need to be like aligned with the left in osteum. So that is very important and EBU might be either pushed upwards or a little bit high so it may not get in get you in there. So but that but was the sometimes reason. Sometimes when you get distal vascular disease, I mean in distal LAD or mid mid or rest was okay. Or you have to go some sometimes so still I think I'm sorry? Uh, no, no, the, this, if there is a distal simple EN you can use, but I, you don't get much support from JL, definitely. EBU or XB is the one which you need to use. Dr. Mahmudul Hassan first, he had some comment. Uh, at the end, it was a good result but for the training of uh, intervention fellows. It is very important to know how to use your rota. In this case, uh, the JETKIN was not uh, giving very much support and with each rota run, your guide was coming Pull out and, and there was a lot of chances that your, my, your wide might have come out and while you are bur burying, so it can perforate the cusp and aorta. So if you have not good support, so it should be used very carefully. Okay. Another point for the fellows especially. Yeah. Yeah, if, if it's not rota, then it's fine. But with rota, it can be difficult. Yeah, sure. One important point for the fellows especially, 80 years old gentleman, diabetic, hypertensive, what is the creatinine clearance and uh, how you have uh, used, what contrast has been used in this patient and uh, how you have managed that one? Uh, basically, uh, actually, I don't remember exactly the contrast used, but uh, uh, creatinine was baseline was normal, and uh, initially she was given IV fluids for PA, PA and prophylaxis also. Frequently, creatinine was normal, and uh, she was discharged uh, basically. What was the extent of the disease in the LED discussion? LED was non-obstructive, given mild osteal plaquing, otherwise it was non-obstructive. Yeah. Yeah, there was some disease in the ostium, so that's why they had to go into the LED. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. The no, the problem is actually with rota, especially in ostial, if you use a more supportive wire, that could be a problem uh, because with the, the, with the less supportive wire, the likelihood that your uh, um, burr will go and follow the wire centrally is more likely if you take a stiffer wire, it can just go against the wall and can cause problems. Uh, did you IVS uh, before doing rota? 
Yeah, no, IVAS was done. I think. Uh, no, it, it started doing Rota, uh, okay. first Rota run, we IVAS, and then subsequently was pre related with 4.5 mm. I think calcium was evident quite much on the even floor, so they decided to go ahead with Rota. Um, they could have tried like even cutting balloons sometime you can use and see, but I guess that's what the operator decided at that time. Okay, if, uh, Farhan.